Well, welcome back here at the Northwest Conference matchup tonight in Columbus Grove. It's the Spencerville Bearcats and the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Let's look at our Columbus Grove starting lineup tonight. Zach Reynolds starting, six foot one inch junior. Uh, Trenton Barraza, looking like six foot one inch sophomore guard. Something that one of the keys players of the game tonight. Number 21, Kyle Hopkins. Number 23, Keegan Bame. Number 24, Tad Cook. We'll get to the Spencerville starters here in just a few minutes, but Gilly, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing started right away. Big fella going inside. Think we got a block. Yeah, big time play for Ted Cook already. Going to get that first two points for the Grove. Uh, that's what they're going to need to get this thing started. My goodness, I'm telling you, on the football field in the fall, the kid was just an animal on the defensive side of the ball between him and Schaefer at the linebacker spot. But he's really got into basketball shape. You can tell he's dropped a little bit of his football uh, physique and got it into basketball. Nice move right there. He hits the Union Bank free throw, and that gives Grove a nice three to nothing lead. It starts the game off just right. In line, gets the pass from Smith, fires up a triple, misses, and a nice rebound brought down by Landon Best. Hopkins with the ball, he's gonna get it over there to Reynolds. Reynolds looking inside, he's gonna drive around, gets the best, best of freshman. Getting a varsity start tonight. Run a little motion offense here. Sit over to Barraza, Barraza kicking it back to best. Spencerville playing great defense and Carter Sidoff's gonna get it early block. Yeah, that's the one where best has to feel comfortable getting it in his left hand and as he grows and matures age-wise, like you said, as a freshman, when he gets older, he'll be able to finish that with the left hand. Bright future for Landon Best, getting that varsity start tonight on a young team, but Cook misses. Blocked by Sidoff and the line gets it out to Evan Osteen. Osteen. Getting in the starting lineup after being injured a few weeks here. Gets it to Dylan Cook. Cook back to Osteen. Smiths were now going to set up their offense. Looking inside to Carter Sudoff. Junior having a great season. Cook driving baseline. He's going to kick it back out to Osteen. Osteen looking over to Dylan Smith. Smith driving, kicking to Osteen. Just over six minutes to go here as Dylan Cook misses the shot. Cook comes down with a nice rebound. It sure was. It was a great job walling up there, putting Cook in a difficult position, shooting that basketball. Landon Best controlling the basketball now for Grove. And you can see Coach Chris Sauter out there barking out instructions. Best kicks it out to Barazzi. He's going to drive the lane. Nice pivot. Puts it up and misses. We're going to get a foul on Dylan Cook. Yeah, that was a, that was one of those partners, pretty obvious. Anybody in the gym could see it. He got him with the <laughs> forearm in the back and absolutely displaced him. Substitution for the Bearcats. That brings up their starting lineup. They started Josh Henline tonight, senior Dylan Smith, Evan Osteen, Carter Sudoff, Dylan Cook, and now Carter Orr going to check in the game. Another name we want to listen to tonight is freshman Owen Sensiball coming off the bench. Yeah, not bad. 8.7 points a game coming off the bench is a... Young freshman. Reynolds kicks it over. He's got it back at the top of the key now. Grove being extremely patient. Gets it inside to Barraza. He's going to use the backboard and gets it to fall. Grove with a surprising 5 to nothing lead here on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Yeah, Barraza's really athletic, as you can see with that steal right there. Barraza gets two points, and now we have a surprising 7 to nothing. This is a football score here, Gilly. Well, yes it is. <laughs> surprised by, you know, maybe not, Grove's not surprised, but Sudoff's gonna get a nice pass from Osteen and that puts the Bearcats on the scoreboard. Now seven to two on the Hawker drywall scoreboard. Yeah, that was a breakdown in communication defensively by Grove, but a really nice pass there. Like you said, Osteen to Sudoff on the block. Best kicks it over to Reynolds, Reynolds. It over to Barraza, now we're gonna get a foul. Looks like we're gonna get a foul on Dylan Smith, senior here. And that's gonna be the third foul already for Spencerville, the first on Smith. Spencerville playing aggressive defense. One thing you know about Coach Kevin Sensiball and his teams, they're always gonna play extremely aggressive defense, which typically means you're gonna have some fouls there too. Well, he's an Ohio Northern graduate and played for Coach Gail Doherty and Joe Campoli, and that's their style. They want to get up into you and make you work for everything. That typically creates offense as well. And another team foul here on Spencerville. They're going to give that one 
to Evan Osteen, which is going to put Kyle Hopkins at the free throw line. And our free throw sponsors tonight is the Union Bank. Union Bank is committed to you as Kyle Hopkins hits the first of two. Yes, yeah, 71% free throw shooter on the year, that young man. Buried them both. And Columbus Grove's done all the things that they needed to do right now. They're hitting free throws, they're playing aggressive on the defensive end, and they're, they're getting their own rebounds. Yes, they're they're doing their job on the on the glass. That's an important part. And then we see a breakdown on the backside. Carter Orr gets the offensive rebounds for the Bearcats after the missed shot by Henline. Gets the ball to Henline in the lane. He's looking around and kicks it out to Dylan Smith. Shoots a triple and is a little long on the triple. Nice rebound by Cook. Good job by Barraza on the backside blocking out there. You know, Gilly, one of the things that you do, you look at these matchups and you see the records and the scores and all that. And, you know, you're looking at a steal right here by Dylan Smith, but you know, one of the things I noticed right away is the the aggressiveness and the confidence of the Columbus Grove Bulldogs with the 94 lead right now. Yes, absolutely. They're playing with confidence at both ends of the floor. Let's see how we handle the basketball here after just getting one taken from us at half court if you're Columbus Grove. We talked a little bit about that aggressive Spencerville defense. You can see them playing a man-to-man -man defense and and getting after him, Carter Orr out on Zach Reynolds as he kicks it out to Kyle Hopkins. He misses the triple, and Orr comes down with the rebound, kicks it out to Henline. Henline's going to drive, takes a Euro step, and he gets it to fall. It looks like a blocking foul. It's going to send Josh Henline to the foul line. Yeah, Landon Best got back as best as he could to position himself for that charge. We both know that's a 50-50 call, and it went against him that time. Nice move there by that young man, Mr. Henline, taking the ball to the basket. Going to get the end one. So Landon Best is called with the foul. It's his first. It's actually the first for Columbus Grove whatsoever. And so, once again, Henline's going to go to the free throw line. First time for the Bearcats. The Union Brink free throw line. He's going to shoot one here and try to make it a triple play, and he misses. Nice rebound by sophomore Blake Summers, who's entered the game and kicked it over to Owen Sensible now to Henline. Henline looking inside, gets it back to Smith. Smith drives the lane, a nice shot in the lane. Sure was. That pushes the score on our scoreboard, nine to eight now on the Hawker drywall scoreboard. Grove hanging on to that slim one point lead. We've seen him up nine to two at one point, Darren. And now, Smithville's cut that lead to nine to eight. I think they got sensible right there with a the body. Speaking of officials tonight, we've got three pretty good ones. Matt Mosier, Greg Spees, and Patrick McInnes. We've seen these guys around quite a bit. You being a basketball guy, Gilly, and me being a former AD, we, we know those face, the faces yep. of the officials, and we know we have three good ones. And three good ones three tonight. really good ones. It's you know going to do an excellent job tonight at both ends of the floor. Nice kick out here to Evan Sauter. He's going to get his first opportunity after coming into the game, and he buries the triple. Big shot by that young man from three-point line. So Evan Sauter pushes the lead to four. He gets Columbus Grove that nice, comfortable lead. Owen Sensible kicks it inside to Carter Orr, makes a nice move, and he's going to get fouled and count it. What a real nice possession there by that young man using the spin and lock inside, getting his shoulder square, getting the defender on his backside, and knocking that thing in for the end one. And now that's twice down the floor. Spencerville's uh, Got a foul and then the opportunity to make it a three-point play and Carter Orr is going to miss that free throw. But Spencer were doing a good job of drawing those fouls and keeping the score close here on the dryer on the Hawker drywall scoreboard. 12 to 10, the Columbus Grove Bulldogs on top of the Spencer Bearcats. Keegan Bame is in the game now. He's going to kick the ball over to Sauter. Sauter going to kick it over to Trent Barraza. Barraza has got it over to Kyle Hopkins. Hopkins. Looking inside, he's looking inside for Kylan Mays. Can't find him there, so he's going to get it over to Keegan Bain. Bain drives the lane. Great defense by the Bearcats. We're going yes. to have to reset the offense here. Spencer really. Bills turning up the defensive pressure, but give Grove credit. They're doing a pretty good job maintaining composure. Being extremely patient, waiting for the good shot, but Dylan Smith gets the rebound. He gets it to Henline, and he's going to finish at the other end of the floor. Josh Henline. Leader of the Spencerville team, a senior, having a fantastic season. Ties the scoreboard here, 12 to 12. Bame gonna take the deep triple. It's gonna hit off the top of the backboard. And 
Spencer are now getting some momentum. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here watching both head coaches. They're doing a great job coaching their kids. Coach Sauter's just saying, relax, just just be patient offensively. That's, that's a great sign, you know, to communicate with the kids. Hey, you know what? We're hanging in there. It's 12 to 12 with 132 to go. Well, they looked like it, the ball had hit on the top of the backboard, but in fact, Gilly, they're going to give a foul to Spencerville's Blake Summers, and Columbus Grove's going to retain possession here. Okay, good call. I didn't see that. I know one thing. Spencerville's going to put Columbus Grove for the rest of the half in a one-on-one -on -one situation. That's their 16th foul. And that aggressive defense is, uh, you know, has a, is, plays on both sides here. And, Looks like they're gonna get a travel call on Kylan Maines. He did a nice job of doing a spin move in the lane, but they're gonna get him for traveling. Yeah, he really came on last year towards the end of the season. Big body, big wide, stays low to the ground. He got caught right there with what they call like a little rabbit step, you know, and just a little extra half step in there for the travel. So it's Josh Enline over to Evan Osteen. He's gonna fire up a triple. He's a little long. Summers there trying to get the rebound, but Barraza ends up out jumping him and getting the rebound. And now in transition, he's gonna head down the floor. He's gonna get the ball over to Bame. Bame's gonna look at Coach Sauter, get the call and go ahead and set up the offense here. Bame gets it to Hopkins. Hopkins, the Barraza, nice take to the hole. He misses and a nice rebound by Blake Summers. That was a great look right there by that young man. Really exploded to the basket. Just shot a little bit too hard off the glass. And so Spencerville makes a great play and then turns the ball over with just under a minute left here on the Hawker drywall scoreboard. We're tied up at 12. Interesting game here, Gilly. We're maybe getting a little bit more than what we bargained for. Oh, absolutely. Got a great crowd tonight, too, on both sides of the, the court here. So Sauter is going to take it. He's going to look inside. He kicks it out to Barraza, past the three-point line. They're looking for Mays on the inside, and Sauter is going to swing it over to Hopkins. Hopkins drives the lane, kicks it out to Barraza. Good job closing out by Spencerville, plus keeping their man in front of them defensively. Nice take by Kyle Hopkins. He misses, but a nice take and a great rebound by Evan Osteen, but he's a little sloppy there and turns the ball over. Raza misses the shot. Looks like Henline got a hand on it, but Kyle Mays is going to take a deep triple, and now Blake Summers comes down with the rebound with Thunder. Three seconds to go, and we're going to get a traveling call right here before the end of the first quarter. And you know, both teams have been pretty well um, composed until maybe that last 30 <laughs> seconds, and then it seemed like they Yeah, I just watched both. Coach Sauter go to his head with both fingers like, guys, be <laughs> smart. Because you don't want to get into a running game with Spencerville. you got to control your own tempo and play your game. And, you know, for the last, what, seven minutes and 45 seconds, I think Grove has, has done that for the most part. And so Sauter's going to fire it up here, and it's going to be just a little bit short. But, hey, what a great first quarter that is tonight. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by the Hawker Drywall and Plastering. You can visit hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. It is 12 to 12 after one here between Spencerville and Columbus Grove on WOSN. Welcome back to Columbus Grove High School, where it's high school basketball here on WOSN. Our premiere, our game is presented tonight by Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in energy efficient zone this year? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or visit Matt, callmattsheating.com to schedule a free estimate. 12 to 12 here on the dryer, the Hawker Drywall scoreboard tonight. What a good game we have so far. Spencer will control on the ball. The first time we see the Owen Sensa ball, the freshman get a shot off and a nice rebound by Columbus Grove, we're going to get a foul on the Bearcats. Yeah, good job by Spencerville to running their offensive set, back screen action with some down screen. They got a good look to sense the ball. He just couldn't knock it in, but a great job by Grove cleaning up the glass and drawing the foul right here. Now we're looking at a one and one situation between fouls seven and ten for the Bulldogs. Well, and you mentioned early in the first quarter that that aggressive defense that Spencerville was playing was also going to kind of cost them here in the second quarter because now Grove is in the bonus uh, quickly. They're going to get a lot of free throws this quarter. You know, you can view it either way because they have a luxury. They can play nine and ten deep, so you figure ten fouls at five uh, per person, that's 50 fouls you can give, but 
if you're not getting them in return and you're putting the other team at the line with the clock stopped, that can come back to be advantageous against you. Zach Reynolds does a great job of hitting the Union Bank free throws. They are sponsored uh, tonight. Union Bank is committed to you. We appreciate their sponsorship. Spencer with the basketball, Carter Orr gets it over to Smith. Smith outside of the three-point line, trying to get the offense going here for Spencerville. Being down two, they get it over to Orr. Orr makes a nice move and kicks it back to Smith. Smith drives the lane. Grove doing a great job defensively. Yeah, they are. They're doing a good job getting out and closing on the shooters. Big shot there as soon as I speak up. Who was that? <laughs> Orr? Carter Orr coming off the bench, providing a spark for the Bearcats. He's got five points tonight. And you know, much needed spark for the Bearcats right now. Gives them their first lead on the Hawker drywall scoreboard. Yeah, that's number six for him on the year from beyond the 19-9 mark. Tad Cook inside, and boy, like you said earlier, he is just doing a great job of being athletic on the inside. Space eater and plays exceptionally hard. May not be the most athletic basketball player, but he's an athletic specimen and does, does the little things. And isn't it true that like in, in any high school sport, you want obviously skilled guys, but athletic guys really are what you need. You, you, you can compete with athletes, but I think you win with basketball players on a consistent basis. And, you know, coaches for the most part in Northwest Ohio do that. And it's tough to have one kid just play one sport because in small schools, you want them to play various sports. So it's great to see Tad out there playing. Explain that very well. Much appreciated. Grove gets the rebound and comes down with it now. And so Hopkins is going to kick it over there to Landon Best. Best, the freshman, is going to drive the lane. Bright future here. Nice take. Misses Cook with the rebound. He's stripped. Gets another rebound. It's set off. Gets the block, but Grove is just there being scrappy. And now we're going to get a jump ball. Well, look who had a nose for the ball, Tad Cook. You know, he got the shot blocked, and rightfully so. You know, just this is where you just got to keep playing and keep playing and keep playing. And I'm sure you've had guys that you've coached over the years like this. I know I did coaching football, but guys that are just always around the ball. They mm -hmm. may not be, you know, like you said, the most athletic, the most skilled, but they just have a nose for the for the ball, whether it's basketball, football. Tad Cook, he's fun to watch. Yeah, well, absolutely. So Best, he's going to try to get this thing going here. Grove hanging on to a one-point lead on the Hawker drywall scoreboard. Columbus Grove playing a great game against the Spencerville Bearcats, who are the leaders of the Northwest Conference right now. Spencerville playing that smothering defense, playing that man-to-man -man defense. Henline on best, gets it to Braza, and that's going to create a turnover. Yeah, that was a tough pass there. Probably a poor angle if they had to do it over again. Just a little bit more spacing. Right idea, though. This is Carter Sutoff. He's taking it inside. He's the center here on the basketball team. And boy, nice looking play by Carter Sutoff. Sure was. Nice wall up by Cook. He just got it up and over and finished with his length and his athleticism. Sutoff's one of those players when he gets going, the whole Spencerville team gets going. He's a six foot six inch junior, so a lot of bright uh, future for him. Yeah, he's grown physically from last year. I remember watching him against Upper Soda Valley in the districts. So Hopkins, he has the ball out front. They're running the offense here, trying to look, get a good look off here. Takes a jump shot, misses. Cook fighting for the rebound, and so is Carter Orr. And looks like we're going to get a out of bounds one. <laughs> Can't get an out of bounds on Columbus Grove, but what a heads up yeah. play by Carter well, Orr. Well, it, it was Tad Cook. Tad Cook was, you know, got his hands on the basketball and then stepped out of bounds while the ball stayed in play. Spencerville man was falling out of bounds and threw the basketball and happened to hit <laughs> Cook standing out of bounds. So, yeah, it's unfortunate break for Grove, but a heady basketball player play there for Spencerville. Absolutely. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan for your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. We'll take a timeout here, and we'll be back in just a moment on WSN. Seventeen sixteen, Spencerville on top of Columbus Grove. Just under five minutes to go here in the second quarter. And Spencerville clinging to a one-point lead as Carter Sutoff gets the pass from Dylan Smith, and that gives him a three-point lead now. Yeah, Grove got caught on the cross-screen action, didn't help him recover, and that led to the early basket there on the, the first cut. 
So Landon Best, he's going to control the ball. Evan Osteen tried to swat it away from him, but get Best gets it back, takes it to the hole, misses the shot, but Cook with the rebound. Best fighting in there, and they're going to say that's off of the Spencerville Bearcats, off of Carter Sudoff, and it's going to stay here with Grove. Grove's going to bring in a plethora of players here, several guys off the bench. Coach Chris Sauter playing a lot of different guys today, eight, nine deep off the bench today. Good luck with that one, partner. He got two teams <laughs> playing a lot of players tonight. <laughs> Fortunately, I know most of the Spencerville kids and there you go. coaching football those years. I know a lot of the Grove kids, so a lot of the names stay the same. They're just brothers and younger brothers of guys that have played before. We're going to get a foul here on Spencerville. Yeah, I think it's Carter Orr with a hold. And that's going to be the 18th foul for Spencerville, which once again uh, brings Grove back to the Union Bank foul line. And Hawker hits the first of the one-on-one, -on -one, excuse me, Zach Reynolds is going to hit the first of the one-on-one, -on -one, but uh, like we said earlier, the foul line is uh, going to be the Achilles heel of the Spencerville Bearcats. Well, he don't look like a 54% free throw shooter, does he? My goodness, knocked them both in right there. He looked very confident, sure did. walked to the line and buried them. So it's 19-18 on the Dreyer Hawker drywall scoreboard. Josh Enline. Looking for Sensiball in the corner. Sensiball over back to Henline. Henline's going to take a step here and fire the triple. That's a nice looking shot. Guys. Yeah, that one's tough to defend because he's got so much doggone experience doing that. And, you know, they're, they're throwing players out there that have a lot of experience from last year. Barraza gets swatted by Sutoff, and Sutoff kicks it up to Henline, and Henline tries to get it to Sensiball, but he's turned the ball over here, and we're going to get another foul on Carter Orr. Mr. Sudoff controlling the pain, isn't he? With his, with his athleticism blocking shots. Well, the, the nice thing that he does is he stays up and down. Now, you do see him swat a lot of balls, but he's not attacking. He's he's staying up and down, and he's getting a lot of, a lot great, of good blocks great from point. it. That's a great point, because rule states you can jump straight up, straight down, vertical, and that's what he appears to be doing. That's when he's going to start swatting the ball. That's when the officials are going to call fouls. So Keegan Bain gets the one-on-one -on, -one on the Union Bank free throw line. He's going to fire this one up and he hits it. That's going to shorten the score here to a 22 to 19 score. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you with your drywall. 36% free throw shooter. Didn't look like it on the first one. In the second one either. Perfect. <laughs> And you know, this Columbus Grove team, you know, I, I, you know, we talked to Coach Sauter and read some of his comments, and he seemed a little, I wouldn't say frustrated, but you know, he's coaching a young team. They're playing like an old team. Tonight. Well, this is a team that's going to get better and better, and come tournament time, they're going to be a tough team that's going to come in with a very, you know, 500 plus average that other teams aren't going to want to play. That was Josh Henline hitting the jump shot. You mentioned him just a little bit ago. He's not afraid to take any shot on the court. He's been out there, which seems like about seven years uh, on that floor. He's got a lot of uh, experience out there. He's a gamer. You know what I'm saying? He wants the ball in his hands in crunch time. So Barraza gets to Cook. Cook's going to back down Carter Sutoff. He lost it. So Dylan Smith's going to recover. He lost it. We're going to get two guys on the floor here. And boy, we're going to get a jump ball, it looks like. But Tad Cook and Carter Sutoff really hustling, showing great uh, competitiveness there. Great effort by both ball clubs. Great effort by, like you said, Cook and Sutoff getting on the floor there. They both got up. Just a clean basketball play. Give a lot of credit though and sensible. They got the ball inside to uh, Tad Cook on the block and Sutoff was behind him well. We had a little dig down action there by Sensen Ball and that's why the ball became a scrum there on the floor. And I like what you said there, you know, it was clean. I mean, both guys were just playing hard. No one was pushing or shoving. They just both dove for the basketball, and that's what those, that's what coaches are teaching them to do, correct? Absolutely. 2.44 here to go in the second quarter. It's the Spencerville Bearcats 24 over the Columbus Grove Bulldogs 20. John Zerby here with Darren Gilbert. We've had a great Northwest Conference matchup so far, and it's been an interesting matchup to see these Bearcats who are favored to win this game in this young, Dylan Cook gets the pass from Dylan Smith, and they're going to call him travel. Switch pivot feet on the turn there, went a high post entry. Mr. Moser said he switched pivots. And you know, I, 
it's hard to see from this angle, you know, but Matt Mosier, a very quality official, and the Smithsville fans don't like it, but. Five feet away, too. So we're going to get a push here. We're going to push Mono, and since it looks like they're going to call that one on Highland Bays. Interesting call there. Actually, excuse me, they're going to call that on Keegan Bame. Yeah, I think he extended his forearm to protect the basketball. So Cook gets it into Smith. Smith running the point here tonight for Spencerville. Spencerville, Brody Summers now in the game, number 22, a sophomore. Now they're going to get Kylan Mays with the call. And Spencerville fans, are they appreciated that call. Interesting how fans, uh, you know, they're, they're four officials when they call it your way, and they're pretty much against them the very next time down the floor when it's against them. It's called athletics, isn't it? <laughs> That's the fun of it. Headlines the inbound the ball. He's gonna look for Smith here. He kicks it out. Smith drives the lane. Over to Owen Sensible in the corner. He's gonna get that one to go. Yeah, that's the one they lost him defensively, and that's one of the things he does well is shoot it. Does a great job of getting the turnover and then saving himself from traveling and gets it back to Henline. Henline over to Cook, Cook to Smith, the wide open triple. It's gonna be a little long there, and that's a good rebound by Keegan Bame. That's a good possession right there, believe it or not, because they forced Sensible off his spot, took away that three that he had just buried, what, not 10 seconds ago. Yeah, absolutely. And that one point, two point lead by Grove is now a seven point lead, which we're cutting down to four as Kyle Hopkins drills the triple, 27-23 on the Hawker drywall scoreboard. Spencer will over Grove. Big bucket right there by the home team Bulldogs. Dylan Smith drives the lane. He ball goes in and out. It looks like it's going to stay with Spencerville. And I was going to say that, uh, Darren, that one of the things that I've noticed tonight is every time you feel like Spencerville is going to go on a little run, Grove kind of just comes back and hits a big shot or gets a free throw or does something that's keeping them inside this game. Yeah, it's like that gnat in the summertime that just wants to keep <laughs> hanging around. You know what I'm saying? 27 to 23 on the Hawker drywall screen. Just under a minute and a half to go. Senior Josh Henline, number three, is going to inbound the ball. And you can see what Spenceville wants to do, partner. They want to get this game, and they want to get it up and down the floor. And, you know, for the most part, Grove has minimized that. Now they got to be careful on the fouls. they got a couple to give. And they're going to give that one to Trevor Barraza. That's his first personal of the night. Only the team fifth. They've done a good job of playing aggressive, but not uh, playing or being too aggressive, I should say, defensively. Sure. Blake Summer, sophomore, gets in, misses the shot a little long. Barraza with the rebound. He's going to get over to Hopkins. Hobson, Hopkins is going to walk it up. Cook is going to the screen. Nice screen there. Hopkins will fire up the triple. He's got it. Yeah, that's a mistake defensively by Spencerville. Sutoff went to help and then. He, he backed off and went back into the post area, and that left all alone the young man from Grove, Mr. Hopkins, for another three, back-to-back -back threes for that young man. So Spencerville clinging to a one-point lead as that's a miss by Blake Summers and a great rebound by Zach Reynolds, and that gets the Columbus Grove faithful excited and into this game, and now we're under 30 seconds, and Grove right in the driver's seat here, down by one, and Hopkins feeling it. Misses the triple, nice re rebound by Suttall. Got to like the shot, though. Just back-to-back to back threes and having another one with no defender anywhere within, what, 10 feet? And he's feeling it. I mean, he's hit the last uh, two and felt it again, and it's a good free throw, or excuse me, good triple try there. It gives Spencerville the last shot here with about five seconds to go. Josh Inline looks like he's going to take the last call, and boy, there's a tough foul right there. If there's anything such as a good foul, that's probably a good foul because guess what Mr. Henline just did? He went from a 18-footer to a 20-footer on the step back and buried it. And you bring up a good point. It's a good foul for many reasons. Number one, because he probably would have hit that shot, but number two, there's they're not in the bonus yet. There's no problem. Yeah. It went in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it went in and it was it was deep. So Osteen's gonna inbound the ball to Henline. Henline's gonna be double covered. He's gonna shoot it anyway. Misses the triple try, so it ends up being a good foul. Great effort by the Columbus Grove Bulldogs, but the Spencerville Bearcats hanging on to that one-point lead on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. It's 27-26. We'll come back here for a halftime show on WOSN.
Welcome back to Columbus Grove High School on the Parker Drywall scoreboard. It's the Spencerville Bearcats holding on to a slim 27 to 26 lead. Our game tonight is presented by Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or visit Matt's Call mattsheating.com to schedule a free estimate. We appreciate Matt's Heating and Cooling being our premier sponsor tonight. Darren Gilbert here with John Zerby and Gilly, we've seen a great first half. An excellent first half by both basketball teams. I'm sure Spencerville is not pleased with only having this one point game, but if you're Coach Sauter on your home court, you have to be tickled to death. And here comes Spencerville trying to turn the heat up with some half court trap action. Well, I think immediately you see the uh, intensity and Josh Inline getting the first deal of the game and he's gonna score here. Yeah, that's where somebody from Grove's gotta to shoot to the foul line area and be a release foul there. And three on two, you're not gonna be very successful. And that turned into a turnover, an easy bucket. I think that was Henline, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, he's got 11 right now in the third quarter. You know, I always like the third quarter, I think for fans is always kind of a quiet quarter, but I always love to see the halftime adjustments as we see Lane and Best try to go inside to Cook. Carter Orr's gonna try to disprove him there, but Best keeps it. But I always like to see those halftime adjustments, especially early in the third quarter, to see what the coaches put in at halftime. Well, you're seeing it right now because Spencerville is trying to force the tempo of the game, and this is where they just got to keep their composure if they're Grove. Best gets it over to Trevor Barraza. He misses, or excuse me, Trenton Barraza, and Barraza misses the three, but the ball's going to stay uh, down on that end for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. I think Coach Sauter was a little disappointed in the shot selection right there. I think he thought Barraza could use his athleticism and improve that good shot to a great shot. Trenton Barraza doing a great job uh, this season for the uh, Bulldogs, averaging 11.2 points a game. Really been one of the key players along with Zach Reynolds, uh, Landon Best also, Kyle Hopkins, and Tad Cook. Barraza looking inside. He's going to get a traveling call here. Now it's going to be a turnover for Yeah, Bulldogs. he did the right thing. He attacked that seam and that gap there, but he didn't jump stop and get his feet underneath him and get caught with the walk. After tonight's game, we'll select the Stolle Insurance Hustle Award. You can check WSN YouTube page for highlights of tonight's winner. And we'll do that right at the end of the game. It's Henline taking the ball to the hole, and Josh Henline now trying to make a statement for the Bearcats. Good job by Henline taking that. I think that it is he not a senior? I believe he is taking that leadership as a basketball player and a, as a uh, leader in trying to create something offensively and getting the ball to the basket. Henline hits the first of two on the Union Bank free throw line. And tonight's free throws are sponsored by the Union Bank. They are committed to you. Henline, we. You know, one of the things we see immediately is Spencerville attacking the basket. A lot of shots uh, in the first half from, you know, jump shots and three-point shots, but immediately you see them go into the hoop in here in the second half. Well, and the other thing is they didn't get to the free throw line much in the first half. And when you got an athletic kid like Henline that's making plays at both ends right now, and those younger kids are seeing that, they're going to respond, and you're seeing it right now. The young man shooting 84.4% at the charity strike. When you see the defensive hustle there, and like you said, the young guys see the leaders doing that stuff. It's only going to say to them, Contagious, hey, isn't it? It absolutely is. We're going to get a foul here by Henline. Aggressive defense. They're and that's one, of, that's one of those fouls, John, if you know how I'm still here. I'm still here. Even yeah. though I got you, I'm still yep. here. Well, you can just see, I mean, Spencer plays aggressive defense already, but it seems like the defenses have come out, you know, you know, even past the three-point line, they're really putting the pressure on Grove to make good plays. When you can force your opponent away from the three-point line and beyond, you're doing your job defensively. And they're going to force a turnover here by great defense. Zach Reynolds is going to get called for a travel. Yeah, it was a travel. You know, Grove's doing a good job getting the ball in the paint, but the problem they're running into is the, the length of Spencerville is causing a lot of problems right now, and they cannot get a shot opportunity. Henline gets the pass from Dylan Smith. He looks inside for Carter Orr. Instead, he goes to Carter Sutoff. Henline is going to take it himself. He's kicking it over to Osteen. Osteen. Good job by Hopkins right there, helping recover and forcing Spencerville into a turnover right there. I think they were looking for Sutoff, and he didn't respond to the dribble drive to the baseline. 
So that's a turnover by Spencerville. Evan, Evan Osteen committing that turnover, and that gives Columbus Grove the basketball back. Five minutes to go here in the third quarter on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. It's the Spencerville Bearcats 31, the Columbus Grove Bulldogs 26. Reynolds kicks it over to Landon Best. Best, the freshman, back to Reynolds. Reynolds kicks it over to Kyle Hopkins. Hopkins looking in the corner for Trenton Barraza. Barraza almost commits a turnover, but gets it back to Hopkins, and Best gets it in for two. Good job by Hopkins right there, running down that loose ball, even though it was a deflection. Best with a good job finishing at the rim. Josh Henline taking the shot, and what a nice jump shot by Henline there to put the Bearcats up by five. He does such a great job creating space for his shot with that step back. Good job there, like you said, knocking that down about 17 feet right down in front of us. You know, that's a, that's a tough play to defend because, you know, he's not wide open. He's got guys on him, but like you said, he steps back and takes that shot with guys in his face, and he's still able to knock it down as you see the Bearcats causing Grove to make another turnover. Yeah, anything that Grove is trying to do from the wing area to the corner, Spencerville has decided to trap everything and rotate. So we have a host of substitutions there. Owen Sensiball coming in for the Bearcats. Blake Summers in for Columbus Grove. They're going to bring back in Kylan Mays. Coming back into the game also Evan Sauter. A nice rotation of different players tonight by both sides. Coach Chris Sauter, Coach Kevin Sensiball playing a lot of guys tonight. Good job by the officials right there. That, that stop stoppage right there was a check and see if that shot down here by Henline was a two or a three. And, Mr. Moser went over and corrected it. They had it right, it was a two. So it's Evan Osteen, gets it over to Henline. Henline takes the jump shot off the dribble and buries it. Josh Henline, really starting to turn up the heat here. 17 points for the senior, and really pushes this lead now for the Spencer Bearcats to seven. Putting him on his back right now here in the third quarter. Grove, Trent Barraza, trying to drive baseline. Looking for Kylan Mays, Carter Sudoff's got him covered. Now we've got a double team by Blake Summers and Owen Sensiball. It looks like it's going to create a turnover for the Bearcats. Sensiball up to Henline. Henline in the corner. He's feeling it, Gilly. Short there, but a nice rebound by Sudoff, and he's going to lay it back in. That pushes the Spencerville lead on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard to 37 to 28. And that's where we're going to go ahead and take a timeout as well as the Columbus Grove Bulldogs have. Our timeout sponsor tonight, Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan for your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. We'll be back here in just a minute on WOSN. Season 18 of the Sports Report continues this Friday night. You can join Patrick Kamler for a full hour of the most comprehensive basketball coverage around all season long. Fridays, 10 p.m., WTLW Sports Report. It's been on forever. It's a staple in our community. Fans, parents, players love to see it. Something that WSN offers so well. And we just do appreciate all the things that our viewers do. TV44 and WSN are nonprofit organizations and they're supported by viewers like you. Now is a great time to make a donation in any size. They set off, I believe. Sorry, partner. I think they got him with a hold. This is one, this is a possession, you know, it's a nine point game right now. Three minutes to go here in this third quarter. Grove's gotta get something positive out of it. So Grove trying to create something here. Keegan Bame on top of the key out front. He's gonna get a nice screen from Kylan Mays. He comes off the dribble and trying to get something open here. That gives it over to Kyle Hopkins. Hopkins getting nice defense by the Spencerville freshman Owen Sensible. And, you know, we're going to get a foul here by Owen Sensiball. And, you know, that's just an unfortunate thing. That's just great defense. But Kyle Hopkins did a nice job of uh, uh, driving the lane and drawing that foul. Yeah, that's one where Owen's going to learn as he gets bigger and stronger to use the chest and not the hands so much when defending. 
Isn't it amazing that when you see a kid as a freshman or a sophomore and you see their size and the things they do, and I always feel like that junior year, you see them and you're like, physically, wow. Well, Sudoff's a prime example to go from last year to this year. He's just, his body's filling out. It's Josh in line again, taking the ball to the foul line. Josh Henline's going to get two here. Yeah, he had the attitude real simple. I'm going to find my way to the basket. If you're going to stop me, you got to step in front of me. And you know, you often wonder. Mm hmm Well, neither one of these head coaches were slouches during their college days, let me tell you that. They, they know the game and they played the game the right way. And you can see that the way they teach the game is a carryover to the way they played it when they were in high school and college. Abs absolutely. Not a bad move by the big, big fella. You know, Coach Sauter applauded that little spin and lock with a baby hook to the baseline. Just a little bit too strong, but you got to like the footwork. Good execution by Spenceville. Good job defensively by Grove. Good job attacking the rim by Reynolds, using that backboard as his friend and knocking that one in. Evan Osteen going to get another triple try from Dylan Smith. He misses. Good rebound by Keegan Bain. He's going to push it up the floor, and now he's going to pull it out. Bro, hanging around. You said Nats earlier in the game. Oh, absolutely. And I, and I think that's a really good analogy of what Columbus Grove's done. Just hung around tonight. Barraza drives the lane. Misses. Owen Sensible with the rebound. Under a minute to go here. Sensible to Evan Osteen, his cousin. Misses. Now Trent Barraza with another good rebound. Great defense there by Sauter going straight up, walling up, making that shot a difficult one for Osteen. I think they got a body foul there. I Sauter, I believe. Good job on the breakout. Unfortunate break for Grove because they got their hands on it, just couldn't secure it, which led to that breakout and the end one for Osteen. Evan Osteen, the junior, are going to get an opportunity here to make a three point play and push this lead to 11 on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Osteen. Timeout sponsor is Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan for your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. We'll be back here in just a minute on WSN.
We're back here at Columbus Grove. We've got a nice game here in the Northwest Conference. Spencerville holding on to the 40 to 30 lead over the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. And we've got a nice move down here by Spencerville. They got a quick timeout. They're gonna get the final shot here, Darren, before the end of the third quarter. Yeah, give a lot of credit to Summers getting that offensive rebound there. He got tied up in the corner, but Coach Sensible, those timeouts, wisely took one right there. So Owen sends the ball, gets the ball to Carter Orr, over to Carter Sudoff. Henline, Josh Henline gonna take the final shot of the quarter, and he got it. Wow. Josh Henline buries it, pushes the lead to 12. Spencerville's in the dryer, driver's seat now on the Hawker drywall scoreboard. That pushes the lead to 42 to 30. We'll be back with fourth quarter action right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Columbus Grove High School. Our game is presented by Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or visit callmattsheating.com to schedule a free estimate. Check out our website, WOSN.TV, for scores and standings for more sports and teams than anyone in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts. There's headline loose. Headline misses the triple, goes off her horse hands. And Grove's going to maintain, they're going to get possession here. Spencer will hold it on to a 42 to 30 lead on the Hawker drywall scoreboard. This has been your typical Northwest Conference matchup. Dylan Smith gets a nice steal, lays it in for two. That's carbon copy what he got early, right at the beginning of the first quarter. He got one just like that, too, for a breakaway basket. Dylan Smith doing a great job. Six points. Gets a lot of breakaway points. One of the other leaders here on the Spencerville basketball team. And now we get a throw for four. Kicks it up to Spencerville. Spencerville on a headline. Got it. And that four, six, eight point lead, Darren, is now turned into 16. Yeah, it's turned into 16, and it's coming from the pressure that Spencerville is applying. Not only that, but the length is causing tons of problems. Nice reverse layup there by Reynolds. Tad Cook made a nice pass and a backdoor cut by Zach Reynolds. Puts the score back to 14 points. Dylan Smith over to Josh Henline. Henline looking inside to Carter Orr. It's guarded by Barraza. Orr makes a good move inside. Shoots, misses, Sudoff tries to get the rebound and does. Back to Dylan Smith. Smith drives the lane and scores. A lot of credit to Sudoff right there. Chasing the loose ball down, giving another possession for Spencerville. Getting a deuce because of his effort. Now we got Owen Sensible with the steal. And looks like we're going to get feet tripped up and the officials are going to call out of bounds on Sensible. Yeah, they both got locked up. I don't think there was any intention right there by best whatsoever. It's two young freshmen that know one another very well. And what you saw was both of them pick one another off the floor, up the up off the floor and continue to just play in the game. I think those two play AU in the summer, know each other pretty well. There you go. So it's nice to see those guys do that. And I think you explained that pretty well, Darren. You know, it's just a a play that they're both, you know, playing basketball and it happened, so. Uh, no, there was nothing malicious or intentional there. Cook gets swatted by Sidoff and kicks it up to Sensiball. Now it's back to Osteen. Osteen over to Henline. Henline's going to try another triple. Man, Josh Henline is on fire. Josh Henline, 25 points for the Bearcats. And he's now pushed this lead to 19 points on the Hawker drywall scoreboard. Tad Cook inside, another swap by Carter Sudoff, and I'm not keeping official stats, Darren, but Carter Sudoff's had a nice defensive he's had, game. He's had a, a tremendous defensive game with his length, and, you know, Tad Cook is just in one of those situations where he's a wide body that creates space, and Sudoff is one of those vertical players, and he's challenged everything that Grove has thrown at them in the interior. And he gets a nice little reward there for all those blocks by getting a nice bucket early. That pushes the lead to 21 as Best tries this triple. Nice rebound by Hopkins there, and he hits the corner jump shot, keeping the lead within 19. Hopkins in double figures now with 10 for the Bulldogs. 
Dylan Smith over to Sensible. Sensible gonna fire the triple from the corner. He buries it. Owen Sensible getting on the board now. Two triples, six points. One of his specialties, getting the feet set, knocking in that three-point jump shot. Now Spencerville pushes their lead to 56 to 34 on the Hawker drywall scoreboard. Landon Best takes the ball to the hole, and he's going to get a foul too. What a great move. Little hesitation dribble off the high post screen, turned the corner. Actually, I think he got soot off in a bad angle right there and had him lunge a little bit and got by him and finished at the rim and drew the foul. Nice play by Mr. Best. Yeah, Landon Best averaging 5.8 points a game. He's done a great job uh, as a freshman coming in on this team. Dad Bryan, high school principal, so uh, doing a great job here in Columbus Grove. And Landon Best getting some quality time on the court. He's going to make this a three-point play for himself. And Best has five points. Dylan Smith going to bring the ball up the floor. 92% free throw shooter. Good job by him. And nice job by Hopkins right there. I believe that's Hopkins. Yeah, Kyle Hopkins uh, gets the ball from Dylan Smith. They're going to get a jump ball here, and that's going to be a possession to Columbus Grove. You know, what a competitive weekend for both these ball clubs. Tomorrow night, you've got coming in here a, a, an undefeated 13-0 Liberty Benton team to play the Bulldogs. And Spencerville, on the other hand, is going to go over to Delphus and play the Blue Jays, who's having a really good year this year. And it's going to be a, quite a, a ball game with some – uh, freshman is going to be out there on the court playing against one another. So a big weekend for both these teams. That's kind of the fun part as you get into this meat grinder of the, the season, Darren, is that you get these matchups. Not only the league matchups, but the non-league ones are really fun too. Well, and the other thing is you got this RPI they've come up with now for the seeding. And uh, if you can sneak away with two wins this weekend for either of these teams or even a split, you know, that's going to go to your point totals that's going to be coming up here and that draw is not that far off. No it's not. Speaking of the uh, Martin RPI, Spencerville then ranked 14th overall in Division 3 uh, looking at sitting about third in the region right now in Columbus Grove at 120th and I know it's uh, a new way to do the seating and all that. We kind of talked about that before the game but um, I think it's something like Joe Idle that field ball fans look forward to looking at and reading. This is something that they'll really pay attention to, especially when tournament time comes around. Carter Orr gets the steal. He's going to take it himself. Makes a reverse move. The ball's going to go on top of the backboard. And he's going to miss it, and Grove's going to get possession. You know, he was going to take that thing up strong with the intention of dunking the basketball. And Coach Sauter's going to talk to him about that, but give a lot of credit to Barraza. He didn't give up on the play and yeah. went up with him and made him change the type of shot he was going to attempt there. And good job there by Mr. I, Barraza. I agree with you, Darren. It looked like he thought he might. Oh, I think he was, <laughs> he was going to try to flush it. I think Coach Sensible's like, you know what? Just put the thing in the basket. And Barraza, a lot of credit to that young yep. man. He, he went after it. Yep. They're going to get uh, Kylan Mays with that foul, and it's going to turn the possession over here. Yeah, that big fella set that ball screen up there. <laughs> you know, I'm looking at his body, and he's only going to get bigger and stronger. The kid's only a sophomore. Yeah. Does Chris it, has got a young team. Yeah. And I've always been very impressed with Coach Sauter and the way he develops those young players and what he gets out of this Columbus Grove team. I mean, you come over here year after year and watch them play, and they're always well coached. Well, he's a disciplinarian, number one, and number two, accountable and responsible. And that's what he gets out of his players, and they respect him for that. Same thing with Coach Sensible. Absolutely. So Evan Sauter is going to get that rebound. Nice uh, offensive set there for Spencer. They just can't get it to fall here, but Evan Sauter is going to go ahead and control the ball here. He's looking for Zach Reynolds. Reynolds is going to drive, kicks it back out to Sauter. We're going to get a foul underneath. It looks like they're going to get this one on Dylan Cook. And it's going to be his third foul for the Bearcats. Uh, team's fifth. You know, we've seen a lot of fouls early from the, the Bearcats in the first half. It's kind of come under control here in the second half. Yes, yeah, certainly has. Hey, real quick, let's send out a thank you to Terry Schnipke over here at oh, Columbus Grove. What an unbelievable facility, uh, the school and the community, and also to Coach Chris Sauter, a friend of mine, and Kevin Sensible, a friend of both of us, that was uh, gracious enough to get us the information uh, passed on to Mark Shine, and it's greatly appreciated. It makes our broadcast you know, uh, make, makes us look a little smarter, doesn't it? 
Well, it might make you look smarter. I don't know about me, but you know, great people, especially like Schnip, Terry Schnipke and these two great coaches, are what makes high school basketball so much fun. As one of these coaches' sons, old sense of all, just buries another triple, pushing it to nine points with a 22 point lead. Well, I, don't, I don't think there's any better sports enthusiasts and players and coaches and fans in Northwest Ohio, whether it be football, baseball, basketball, track and field, you name it. You know, sports is a big thing in Northwest Ohio. Missed shot there. Blake Summers is going to get it here. Pushed to Carter Orr. Orr. Looks like we're going to get a timeout here by Coach Sensible. We're going to take a timeout here as well. Only Hawks drive all scoreboard. It's 59 for the Spencerville Bearcats. 37 for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Our half tire, or excuse me, our timeout sponsor is Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan for financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. We'll be back here in just a second on WOSN. We're back here at Columbus Grove High School. Our game is presented by Matt's Heating and Cooling. Visit Matt's. PaulMattsHeating.com to schedule a free estimate. Spencerville Bearcats on top of the Columbus Grove Bulldogs and the Hawker Drywall Scoreboard, 59 to 37. Some new players in the game here. Blake Summers, the sophomore, fires up a triple. The guys battling inside. Michael Woods battling Kylan Mays. Spencerville two subs in right now. Nice move by Zach Reynolds. Reynolds miss. Mays on the rebound. Misses. Summers gets the rebound. Good effort by Mays. He just got to, you know, get himself under control there and finish those plays. Did a good job rebounding both ends of the court. Freshman Grady Smith in the game is going to handle the ball, and they're going to get another freshman, Landon Best, here with the reach. Good defense by Best. Officials are going to get him here, but it looks like now they're not going to get him there. Five-second call, so good defense by Landon Best, and my mistake. 22-point lead here by the Bearcats, and I can't – it doesn't seem like a 22-point game, Darren. I mean. No, it's not a 22-point game. You're going to pick the newspaper up, and you're going to see the disparaging score, but it was a lot closer than it was. And they were right there, Grove was, for the first half. And give a lot of credit to Spencerville and what they do and what they do best, and they turned it up at both ends of the floor the second half. Smith. Controlling the point, gets it over to Blake Summers. Summers looking inside to Michael Woods. Woods going to take it up and get it to fall. Michael Woods getting in the game, getting his first two points. And he's going to go to the Union Bank free throw line. And that's the verticality right there. If May stays vertical and goes straight up and straight down, when he, when he decided to lean his upper torso down, that's where they got him for the foul. And Woods showing an athletic play here. Is going to get a chance to make it a triple. Doesn't. That pushes the lead on the Hawker drywall scoreboard to 61 to 30 seconds. Under 10 seconds to go here. In just a few minutes, we'll have our Stolly Insurance Hustle Award. You can check WSN for the YouTube page to see the highlights of that. Columbus Grove not going to get that final shot off, and it's going to be a final here in Northwest Conference action tonight. Special Bearcats continue to lead their Northwest Conference dominance with a win tonight here at Columbus Grove on the Hawker drywall scoreboard the final. 61 to 37. Join me and Darren here for a post game show right here on WSN. And we're back here to wrap up this game tonight at Columbus Grove High School, the final of tonight's game. The Spencerville Bearcats continuing their winning ways over the Columbus Grove Bulldogs, 61 to 37. Darren, we've seen a great game tonight. We talk about Stolly Insurance Hustle Award, and no better player than the player you're going to mention tonight, our winner of tonight's Stolly Hustle Insurance Player of the Game. Well, I think, you know, there's no question to both of us, as well as anybody in the gymnasium tonight, uh, goes to Mr. Josh Henlein, the yeah. senior. You know, he stepped up and did what he had to do. Uh, I'm sure it was probably a pretty quiet, like you said, locker room in there at halftime with not a lot of rah rah going on. And he just let his play dictate it there in the third quarter, both at both ends of the court and even diving on the floor. And we've seen that displayed on a couple of loose balls. And when you see that happening and it's your best player and your leader, those other kids, it's going to become contagious. 
and he did just that tonight. And, you know, kudos to him for a, a great game of 20-plus. And uh, Coach Sensible, you know, they're going to move on tonight from this game and, and remain in first place in the conference. So congratulations to Josh and well-deserved honor tonight for being our player of the game for Stolich. Coming up here, like Darren mentioned earlier, Columbus Grove will host Liberty Benton tomorrow night in a great non-league matchup. Spencer will travel to Delta St. John's. We'll see two outstanding freshman matchup there and two outstanding teams. Speaking of WOSN schedule, we'll look at uh, that game on Sunday at 7.30, Spencerville at Delta St. John's, and then you've got the game tomorrow night, Bakken's at New Bremen. That's going to be a dandy That'll down be a at good New one. Bremen. Yeah, you got two ball clubs that uh, have a lot of rich tradition in tournament time, and it's going to be a slobber knocker, so to say. <laughs> so, yeah, it'll be a very entertaining game. Both games are going to be very entertaining, WOSN. Yeah, you'll see that game at Sunday at 9 p.m., and then next Friday night you'll see Allen East at Lincoln View at 10 p.m., you also see Bluffton at Spencerville at 11 p.m. So we have a full slate of games. I want to thank some special people tonight. Der Terry Schnipke, athletic director here, doing a fantastic job as always. And guys working here with us tonight. Not only Darren Gilbert here beside me, but Stephen McNeil and Keaton Hawker on the camera. Zach Keith back at the studio. We appreciate all their hard work supporting us here at WSM. The final, 61-37, Spencerville over the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. For Darren Gilbert, my name is John Zerby. Thanks for joining us tonight. We say so long, everybody.